Hi, my name is John Wyant. Welcome to Northern Illinois University's Computer Science 463, Computer System Architecture and Organization, also taught at Harper College. It is the purpose of this video to show you how to connect to the various websites to find the materials you need to be successful in completing this course. So if you're watching this video, you have probably received your invitation uh, message on Blackboard that I will send out before I release this video. That invitation will include a link to this home page here, which is for this course in the fall semester of 2022. Uh, the things you need to know about uh, in this website right off the bat are these are your team here. There's me, the instructor. How do you contact me? When will I be in my office? Well, you can contact me anytime in office hours, either live at Northern Illinois University, or you can contact me at Teams during these hours. The TAs and their office hours are down here. You can contact them on Teams during their office hours as well. This uh, semester, the university requested that all of the TAs hold all of their office hours exclusively on Microsoft Teams or officially online, but we're using Microsoft Teams. So that's where they will be. Now, if any of these hours don't work for your schedule, every one of us is available by appointment. Just send us an email. If you don't know who to send it to, send it to all of us, okay? Otherwise, you're probably going to be wasting your time while we uh, while we try to figure out how to reply to these things. Uh, we, you have three people, use them. Whoever responds first will take care of your needs. Uh, okay, so back to the top here, the course syllabus. This is basically the rules of the course, everything that happens in the course and how you will be graded, how things will be uh, weighted, everything else is all outlined in here. I don't take attendance. Attendance is not required. It's very convenient. If you're in the live section of this course, you can just watch all of, it, all of the lectures online if you want to. If you're in the online class, you're already doing the right thing. The exams will be held on the date specified. There won't be any late exams. You need to finish them in the time window when they are presented, especially the final exam. University is very stra uh, strict about these sorts of things. If you cannot uh, attend an exam for whatever reason, you need to uh, request an accommodation before the exam, not after, okay? Uh, there are a lot of programming assignments in this course. This is a computer science course. You should be uh, expecting to write a lot of software. Uh, there's a whole discussion here how they're great. 34% for your output, 33% coding, documentation, and so on. How we're going to check your output using diff and so on. If you don't know what this means, you can contact your TA or myself. Uh, and there's some other discussion about what you, how do you mark your homework assignments? Uh, how does your computing account work? If you've never been at Northern Illinois University before, I will, uh, you, you can expect a note on Blackboard, another announcement that will tell you how you're supposed to get your password set up the first time. If you've already used your password on Turing or Hopper and forgot your password. Okay, specifically for Turing and Hopper. You need to contact the administrator for Turing and Hopper. The university, okay, manages your so-called ZID and your access to the networks on campus. That is a completely different password, even though your account is still using the same ZID, right? So the campus network, for example, uses the same password for, for uh, Blackboard as well as Wi-Fi access and things like that, your email account. Hopper and Turing are separate machines that are managed by our own uh, computer science department system administrator, whose address is below uh, in this um, uh, list right down here. Right there it is, Kirk Duffin. If you cannot log in to Turing or Hopper, because your password is expired or you got locked out, which can easily happen if you log in repeatedly with the wrong password after so many times, and it's not a big number, I don't remember what it is, it's on the order of like 10 or 20 times, it will be locked out permanently. If they, you cannot log in at all, you need to contact the administrator. I can't stress enough, 
A lot of students waste a lot of their time and they have a lot of panic and stuff like this. <laughs> Contact this person right here. Please carbon copy myself with my email address as well so I understand before there's a problem that there is one evolving if this happens to you, okay? Enough said. Uh, how to get help. The university has, you know, uh, a disability resource center and things like that. If you need a special accommodation for the course, it is online and asynchronous, so I can't imagine what kind of accommodations you would need other than the fact that you already can watch the lectures anytime you want, stop them, take extra time, and so on. But if you need any help beyond that, do not hesitate to contact the uh, Disability Resource Center. And or for the subject matter, there's, of course, myself and your TAs, okay? Uh, there's also, you know, the university has anxiety support groups and things like that. I mean, we're living in some weird times here with COVID and monkeypox and what's next, you know? Uh, if you need help, don't, you know, go ahead and reach out. They, they have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, counseling services and st stuff like that, right? Don't cheat in my class, all right? I don't tolerate it at all. I find out you're cheating, you're going to fail. Enough said. Read this. This is the official statements from the university concerning that matter. The university takes this very seriously. If you cheat multiple times, you'll probably be uh, expelled from the university. <laughs> Don't cheat. It's as simple as that, okay? So there's the course syllabus. Read it, know it, love it. That's the rules of your how you'll be graded and stuff like that. Down here is the tentative schedule. I always say tentative because things have a tendency to slosh around, especially when there's random pandemics taking place. Um... This should be pretty stable for the online version because, like I said, you can watch the lectures whenever you want, uh, early or whatever. These are all the topics, roughly the, the week uh, where they'll be presented. This is the date of the Sunday at the beginning of each of these weeks. During the course, these will highlight red for the current week. Okay, why? Because I can never remember what week it is myself. So I actually put that one in there for myself. I think it's really useful. There'll be a big red bar for this. this is the current week right here kind of a thing going on, all right? Each week, there'll be a, a list of topics that you, you should keep up on, and I'll show you where the video links are below. Uh, and there's also a note about what assignment may or may not be due in any particular given week, okay? So uh, assignment one is a, you know just like a verification that you can log in and hand in something. This should not require a lot of work, but if you're having trouble logging in or something like that, it can turn into a time consumer uh, just because, you know, your password doesn't work or something like that. So start up assignment one right away and super early. I'll show you how that works in a second. Here's all this stuff. You got your midterm on the week, halfway through the class. There's a, an election holiday here, Thanksgiving holiday down there. Um, Sometimes that impacts the course, and these things tend to slosh around a little bit down here. Again, this is tentative, so sometimes these topics might uh, move up or down uh, a little bit. Final exam for this course is on this date and time, okay? I've already posted the first three assignments, so you already know an entire month's worth of homework assignments right here, along with all the lectures and handouts that you need to do these assignments. So if you need extra time, start early. I'm not going to be uh, accepting a lot of late uh, homework. Uh, now, with regard to late homework, as it states in the syllabus, you can hand it in up to two days late with a certain penalty. These uh, assignments are always due on Fridays. If you want to take an extra weekend, I do that as a gift. I mean, presumably, you're not working or anything else like that. You might have time. You get an old panic. You can take advantage of that time. Uh, if you hand it in one day late, you'll lose you know, 10%. If you hand it in two days late, you'll lose another 10%. So there's a letter grade off for each day it's late. But you know, once, maybe twice in a semester, you might have to do a little bit of extra Saturday work, uh, depending on uh, your situation, right? That won't happen if you start early. <laughs> News flash: start early. Um, do, you will get zero points if you don't finish it. You know, with by the end of the day, Sunday, because we I mean, we all have lives. We have to move on, grade these things, post the grades and stuff like that. Now, if you have medical conditions or something like that, or you're in the hospital or whatever, we, there are other accommodations that we will make. Uh, let us know as soon as you can in advance. You know, from note from your doctor, that kind of thing. 
if you need a medical extension, okay? Down here in the course website, you can see some of these have these green headers like this, the assignments, these are required. Course information, it's required that you know these things. Yellow ones are review material and you know stuff you should know. I'll give you a hint right now, the reason these are all in here is because Every single semester, I have an enormous number of students that have a huge amount of time consumed of theirs, wasted and grade grade loss and everything else because they uh, didn't remember these from the prerequisite courses. These are absolutely critical. You will not get an A in my course if you don't know the material that's in here. I'm not going to teach it in my course, so it's officially review. However, I strongly urge you to watch these and watch them in their entirety, okay? <laughs> don't just watch the first minute and go, yeah, I know all this. Trust me, you probably don't. Just given the 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 uh, the issues that, that crop up with students in the past, all right? And don't take this as, as, as me dissing you. It's just sometimes we forget things uh, as the years go by, as the months go by, all right? Trust me, you want to you wanna watch these in order to uh, get your output formatted correctly because you have to format your output correctly. In this course, spaces count, everything counts, and I go into a lot of detail in these videos how to read things without messing it up. You'd be surprised. <laughs> watch that and how to print things and get everything exactly perfect, okay? And I kind of glossed over up here as well how to use pointers and stuff like that. Hopefully by now you know these things and if you don't feel that you have a strong uh, understanding of these things, you might want to watch these too, okay? I give these as a gift to you. In this class, you'll be expected to use the getOpt function. Uh, if you don't know how to use it, here's a, a lecture that I uh, put together uh, where I walk through the manual page and put together some sample test apps and say, here's how you use this. If you don't know what this is, then by definition, you need to watch this video, okay? And there's some Wikipedia pages and other things about GetApp, how you're supposed to use it, a little bit about the history, and you'll recognize what it's doing if you've ever logged into a uh, command line before in your entire life. This is the thing that allows you to, uh, it's a library of support routines that allows you to take, you know, uh, uh, parameters to your command line uh, uh, commands, like, ls command and you say minus l that's an option and get opt is a nice library that you can use to uh to find out if if the minus l option for example was provided on your command um these warnings waste a lot of my students time okay i recorded these specifically in response to many students that have come to me in computer science 463 because they're compile they're, the the, the compiler generates a lot of warnings in their code because, quite frankly, uh, they, they don't realize certain things are going on. And this is all part of learning. Trust me, you want to be aware of these because it's a showstopper in this course. Your program will fail to compile if you get these uh, warnings due to the way the compiler runs in these assignments. Trust me again, you want to watch these. Otherwise, you're going to waste your time. This is something you should also know when we uh, grade your assignments, we will run them through Valgrind. You don't know what it is? Watch this video. Uh, this is also a helpful thing. Uh, assertions are used, very useful for when you're writing your programs. If you have functions that um, require certain constraints in their arguments that are, are not you know, adhered to, you need to assert you know, the bounds. Is it okay? Did I get a parameter that makes sense? Now, there's a subtle difference between assertions and, you know, checking for user errors. Assertions are actually used to check for program failures. These are failures of design, failures of implementation. These are program logic problems. You don't use assertions to see if the user left an argument off the command line. Those are user errors. When you have a user error, you need to report it and make a nice, pretty uh, uh, message that a user can understand. Assertions, as you can see, if you watch this uh, recording, are really more about what happens if you have an integrity error within your source code. Like, the, let's see, of, of a function that requires a, uh, a pointer to some structure when it is called as an argument, but it's called with a null, and it's illegal in your code to pass a null parameter in that case, right? What do you do? 
That's not really a user error, right? That's your own program. You made a mistake as a programmer. That's what these are for, okay? You should at least understand them and recognize what happens when, when, when the assertions fail, what the error messages look like, and things like that. Because you've probably seen these before without knowing it. Trust me, it's something that you should know if you ever plan to write code for a living. Even if you're using in other languages and stuff like that. That is a very common thing. You're watching this video right now. It says fall 2021. I am updating it when I'm done with this recording. If I'm talking too slowly and you are bored and you have not taken the time to learn how to use uh, YouTube, there's ways to speed up the video playback so that you can get on with your life. Here's a very detailed walkthrough, excruciating detail of how to do every single thing, one line after another, to do and hand in assignment one. You have no excuse to do it late. Watch this video while it's playing. Go through the motions and make sure all your logins, your 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 ability to run the various scripts and hand in your homework is, is uh, working and functioning properly, okay? Uh, the rest of this then is, as we say, history. So the rest of the course begins here. We start out with a little talk about computer history. In each one of these sections, I've got uh, a, a lecture here along with whatever handouts. Sometimes I'll show something in a video or I'll refer, oh, look, here's a, a web page on something. And I will include those links down here so that you can see what's going on. A word of warning. This list here and these lectures are the official lectures for this semester in Computer Science 463. If somebody put together a playlist on YouTube, so that's great, but it may not be this exact list of videos because when I make mistakes, I will fix them over the course of time. And those may not be in YouTube playlists that are made by someone else. This is the official playlist for this course. Okay. Now to that end, let's look at this uh, how to do assignment one video here. Uh, I, I well, Sometimes... That's not the video I wanted to show you. Maybe it's, which one? Oh, it's the history one. In the history lecture here, I make a mistake. I misspeak in this video, and someday I'll update it. But until then, if you click this little more button down here, see you're on YouTube, hey, here's a video, and there's a little description down here. You have to be very careful. There's a little button in this description that opens it up. What happens is if there are mistakes in this video that students have reported or that I've noticed, I will list them in here with the timestamps in the lecture where I speak, uh, you know, incorrectly about something. All right. I fully disclose all this stuff. You can also come down here and read the various comments. There are none on this particular video, uh, but some of the videos do have comments down there with other opinions and, hey, here's another source and things like that. They might be useful to you. But absolutely, positively, if I'm aware of a mistake that shows up later on, there will be a list, a set of notes down here in the video. You might have to click a little button like you saw me do that says more over here, okay? In this particular case, I misspoke and said that the paper tape on Colossus include, uh, contained data, but uh, it is, or, or geez, no, I made a mistake correcting my mistake. <laughs> Always good to read these things, right? In the, in the video, I said that the um, paper tape included instructions for the machine, but I got it backwards. The paper tape contains data, and the vacuum tubes on this particular machine includes the various uh, instructions and state of the program, okay? So, like I said, I will, I will put uh, a list of bulleted uh, items in here if there is any mistakes, okay? So you want to know about that if that should be the case all right so have at it work your way down this list uh preferably in the order uh outlined in the schedule at the top of the web page here uh sometimes some of these things might get a little bit out of order with the rest of the web page because during the semesters you know sometimes in the spring we have spring break and in the fall we have Thanksgiving, and I might have to rearrange one of these uh, items in here. So make sure that you check the topics for the week, then go down here and find the, uh, the lecture. So the big green bar heading should match the, the weekly lectures. Uh, if you look closely at how we grade the programs, I insist that you use Doxygen style comments. 
A lot of students complain, oh, I didn't know I needed to do this. There's an entire lecture on here and might even be a little bit on the long side. But you've been, <laughs> you have everything you need here to understand how to do this. It turns out it's pretty straightforward and simple. There's a very specific style of what you're supposed to do. There's a whole website, a whole set of tools. You probably recognize what happens uh, when uh, you run Doxygen on your program and it generates a bunch of information about your code because it is incredibly widely used on a vast array of open source projects when they create the documentation. Here's what this function is, here's what it's called, here are the parameters, and here's how to use them. You will recognize it, or <laughs> you will soon. Uh, most businesses have some set of rules that you need to follow for uh, documenting your code. Um, so uh, in this course, the rules are Doxygen, okay? I give you a properly documented function. I give you your own Doxy file that I go through in this lecture. If you actually want to run it yourself, you don't have to run it in this course, but it, your code should be set up such that you can run it, all right? And there's an official website on how everything works. Uh, while we're here, I noticed this link to WSL. Let's take a quick look at that as well. This could be very useful to you because all your homework is graded on Turing and Hopper at, at the university. I say Hopper in here. Hopper has a twin called Turing. Those two machines are the official ones for student homework and the ones that we will be using for grading. That and only that is all that matters when we grade your homework assignment. If it doesn't work perfectly on Hopper, you're not going to get an A. And I don't care, no one cares, if it works for you on your Mac or your Windows machine or anything else. You're basically functioning the same way you will in the future when you write code for a living. Someone pays you to do something and you do it and it works on your phone or your PC and doesn't work on theirs. Do you think they're going to pay their bill? No. So this is the same kind of thing you're going to have to get used to anyway. The rules here are your program must run on this machine when it is graded. Okay. Now with that all said and done. Your life might be easier to do your iterative testing if you use Windows. I personally don't, so I don't have a lot of experience with this, but I've seen other students use it. You can install Windows Subsystem for Linux on your Windows PC, okay? If you're, again, using Windows. You don't need any of this on a Mac. You don't need it if you're on Linux or Unix or anything else like that. The Macs and and Linux are really the same as far as this course is concerned. You open up a terminal window on a Mac, and you're going. Uh, if you, you, The problem is Windows doesn't have such a thing. So you can install this thing. This actually is from Microsoft. This is a real deal on Windows 10, Windows 11, and whatever. Uh, you can see plenty of videos on how to do it. Uh, I bring it up in here because, it, personally, I would find it a lot more convenient to be able to iterate when I'm developing my homework and stuff like that, test, edit, compile, test, edit, compile, test. While it's on my desktop, I can open up many different windows, and it's really convenient. When I'm done with everything, and this is the key, when you're done and you think it's all done and fine, you can copy all your files over to Hopper and test it again. Do not just go blindly handing it in and say it works for me. Again, it doesn't matter if it works for you. The number one cause of programs that work for me, and then I handed it in, and the TA didn't grade it right kind of arguments are, you screwed up when you copied your files over to Hopper to hand them in, because you have to hand them in on Hopper and or Turing. And uh, a lot of students will screw up the copying of their files. And, of course, they would have known that if they tested it. So, you know, I, I guess I've been through this many, 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 many times. I'm trying to help you save your time and your grade. You must test it before you hand it in. Otherwise, you'll end up with a zero for no good reason, only because you didn't bother to take an extra two minutes, okay? Now, I've ranted enough about the warnings. Uh, the rest of this course should be pretty straightforward. Once you get your, you know, your, your, your self-oriented, you can just work your way through all this fun stuff and grab the handouts and use the other references on the web that you see in these lectures. All right? So I hope we all have a good semester. I will try to keep the assignments posted really early, uh, especially for the online uh, courses, so that you can have a little bit more flexibility in your schedule. If you need extra time, don't ask me if you can hand it in late. 
You want extra time? Start it early. You have a month to do two weeks worth of homework, okay? I think that's enough extra time. I hope it is, all right? If it's, you know, if you have, again, if you have issues, let us know before they become a problem, all right? I'll see you online. Have a good semester.